Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you here this morning. Now, in a few minutes, we're going to start our worship service, but today is a little bit different for a few moments. Um, I am officially the moderator of our church. That just means that I get things started, and today is a special business meeting, which uh, because uh, Bob will come and inform you in a few minutes, we're voting on... Um, that person that will succeed me at the end of the year, which would be uh, Jody, I hope. And I don't... <laughs> anyway, we have to have, according to protocol, we have to have a special called business meeting to do it this way. So we're doing it right away up front in the service, and Bob is going to come now and uh, instruct you. So I'm calling this business meeting to order. And uh, Bob Murdoch, who is the chairman of our elders, We'll take it from there. Okay. First, good morning. Great. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, let me go ahead and the people who were ushers can go ahead and do what they're go we're going to do. Yeah. Two weeks ago, uh, we ended up reading to you the results of the pastoral search committee's uh, results, actually. And uh, it had to be done that far ahead. Today, we have an opportunity to vote on the results that, the, that that committee recommended to the congregation. So the ushers are handing out uh, pieces of paper that look like this, that actually have written on them, which I'm gonna read to you in just a minute, so you be sure you don't misunderstand what it's about. Uh, and these are for members only. Um, you said if, you, if you're a member, take one, you get to vote. If you're not a member, become a member. Then you can vote on everything. <laughs> you know, that solves the problem easily. Uh, what this is, is this is a ballot that says you either accept what the pastoral search committee recommended or you reject it. So a yes means you accept the results. Uh, uh, a no means you reject the votes. Once these are handed out, we will uh, actually pick them up. You need to mark them now. We will come back up and, uh, and actually pick them up. So uh, we're going as fast as we can. All right, the, uh, the other thing is that once they're picked up, just so you understand how this system works, we're gonna take all these to 121 uh, there are some elders who will then count these. Uh, we will, at the end of the service, we will uh, announce the results so that you know how the, how the uh, vote went. So, um, I was gonna wait till everything was done, but it's taken a little bit longer than I thought to uh, get the, the uh, ballots out. Let me just read the ballot so I'm, I'm sure you understand what's going on with the ballot. Um, and this ballot is to, for the affirmation of Associate Pastor Jody Sharkey as Senior Pastor of the Lincoln Community Church. The Pastoral Search Committee voted unanimously to recommend Associate Pastor Jody to be called as our new Senior Pastor at Lincoln Community Church effective January 1st, 2004. So now the voting part at the bottom, should Associate Pastor Jody Sharkey be confirmed as our new senior pastor, yes or no? Oh, that's what you're voting today. Uh, so there's no misunderstanding about what those yeses and nos mean. Um, it, has, it was, is a great pleasure to, two things, to have served under Pastor Mike for the years that I have and for uh, the opportunity to uh, see God's provision for this church and that's what it is for the future. We're gonna need ballots up here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They're coming up? They're coming up. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna get some ballots for the, right, for the top of the stage. Uh, that's done, once she's handed them out, let's come pick them back up and everybody mark them real quick. Pass them down to the end. Well, no, we're gonna pass the buckets down. You just drop them in the bucket. Um, what are we doing after this? We got a song to do? <laughs> oh, we are. Why don't you guys get up and play? Yeah, you can. Now that you voted, you can play.
with you gentlemen. That'll get your blood going in the morning, won't it? <laughs> King David wrote, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We can look out on this bright autumn morning and think, yeah, that's why we should rejoice. But that's not why David rejoiced. He rejoiced that God made the day. And here we are on God's day, in God's house, surrounded by God's children. No wonder David wrote, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and call us your children. We thank you that you've invited us to your home today. We invite the Holy Spirit to fill the sanctuary, touch our hearts, touch our minds with pastor's words. And Heavenly Father, when we leave this place, let us be able to say, it was good to be in the house of the Lord. For we ask this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing. Amen. There's within my heart a melody this morning. I feel like singing. How about you? Oh, man, we're in trouble. I feel like singing. How about you? All right, now we're ready. Here we go. He keeps me singing. There's within my heart a melody. team sing that first verse by themselves huh? oh the pressure and then we'll have you join us here we go his grace is sufficient all right give me a little intro there
think. Ready? Okay, you like it? Good song, isn't it? All right. Let's see if we can start that off a little better, okay? <laughs> Go back to that first verse, uh, will you, Ricky? Many times I'm tried and tested. Here we go. Ready? Many times I've tried and tested as I travel day by day. All guide me with pain and sorrow and this trouble in the way. But I have a sweet assurance that my soul I'll tell you, this guy must have played a running back in high school. He is so nimble on his feet. <laughs> anyway, great singing. Our response to reading this morning is entitled, The Light That Saves, comes from the Gospel of John. So I invite you to follow along and read with me. I'll be reading the white, and I think the yellow is yours. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made as been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light that gives light to every man coming into the world. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. The word became flesh, made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, and he gave his one and only Son, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him 
not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's Son, of the Holy Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. No one has ever seen God, but the God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. May the Lord bless this reading this morning to our hearts and to our souls, to our minds, and to all of our being. Amen. All right, come on up, folks. I think there was more there, Pastor. <laughs> I didn't want to be the only one. <laughs> Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. What does it say? His child and forever I am. Amen. Let's sing it together. Here we go. Redeem how I love to proclaim it. Redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Welcome to Lincoln Community Church. We call this place home. And if today is your first day with us, we want to say, Welcome to home. I want to call your attention to the um, altar flowers today. They are provided for, uh, by uh, Catherine Fowler in loving memory of her husband, Jim. And uh, Catherine, thank you for making our sanctuary just a little bit prettier today. One of the ministries that we have at Lincoln Community Church is our monthly food drive. It starts today and it goes all the way until Wednesday. Uh, we'll put a table out front. You just drive up, drop off your uh, donations, and uh, we'll take care of it. Uh, uh, um, and we'll take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight is our movie and hot dog night. I know that with everybody has uh, cable and you can watch any movie you want, but, but when you come to church, at five o'clock we'll have a meal. At five o'clock exactly, we'll ask the blessing on the food. Then we'll eat and then we'll come in and we'll start the movie about 5.30 and when we leave, the pastor gives us ice cream. <laughs> yeah, it's just the movie, but it's the fellowship. It's the fellowship that we hold so dear. Um, and all of that. And uh, Ricky, do we have the uh, uh, video for the Christmas box, please? Three, two, one! When that shoe box is open, they're overjoyed. You can see them shouting, jumping. Oh, look at how much they are excited. This is the first time those children are receiving the shoe boxes. They are so happy. Every box is important because every box is an opportunity to tell a child about God's love, about His Son, Jesus Christ. If you get the heart of the child, you will reach the heart of the parents, you will reach the heart of the family, and then you will touch the community. That gift box is the beginning into their hearts. Isn't it incredible how these gifts touch the lives of these children? 
Every year we see tens of thousands of children discipled. And we couldn't do this without you, so thank you for packing the boxes. Thank you for praying for these children around the world. God bless you, and keep packing those boxes. We have an opportunity to uh, fold the boxes and fill the boxes. And you heard what Franklin said. Every box is an opportunity to tell a child that Jesus loves them. And we're part of that program. Lisey, do you have an announcement? Would you like to come up? morning. I promise to make this brief. So here we go. Uh, I'm making an announcement for the upcoming craft fair. And today is the first day that we're taking signups for either chili or soup. And we need all of you to make um, either a crock pot of soup or chili. So today and Next Sunday are the only days that we are going to take sign-ups. So if we don't have enough, I'm going to call you. <laughs> but when you walk out the doors, it is extremely to the right. I mean, whatever. Thank you. Whatever, yeah. It's so easy to be up here, you know? If you look at the next to the last page, you'll see our praises and prayers for our church family. We want to remember uh, Chuck um, and Angie Mesner. Chuck went home to be with the Lord after an extensive stay in the hospital, but he was surrounded by his family. And then uh, on Friday, Hank Correa passed away into the arms of the Lord. And while we are a little bit sad because we can't put a hand to them anymore, Imagine what they're living like. They closed their eyes for the last time on earth, and when they opened them, they saw the faith face of our Savior. Amen? Amen? So we will praise God because my Bible says that we will see those brothers again. Um, you'll notice that uh, it's also praises and prayers. Uh, Dave Salson had open heart surgery, and it went well. The doctors are pleased. Um, Maureen was pre pleased. Dave was pleased. And so we say, Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And then in the very back row is Mike Hamill. Everybody say, hi, Mike. Hi. He's back. <laughs> you can look at all these names on the prayer list. And we have praises and we have prayers. James tells us that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And so we pray for one another. And if you have an opportunity to pray for a family member, maybe a, uh, a neighbor or a friend, I'm going to invite you to pray for them silently and give me just a moment after that that I'll pray for all of us. before your throne and we acknowledge that you are the almighty creator that Jesus is your son and your Holy Spirit is with us today and we would look at these names on the prayers and praises Heavenly Father we pray that you would strengthen their spirit with your spirit we pray Heavenly Father that you'd put your hand on their body and that you would comfort the family we invite uh, you to be with Pastor Mike as he brings our message today and Heavenly Father, as he preaches your word, let us draw close to you. We would pray for the offering. We pray that you would bless the gift and the giver. And then, Father God, we pray that you would grant our requests for the glory of your name as we recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God be praised.
remember I'm supposed to do this. Thank you for having me back here. I like doing this. It gives me something to look forward to. And although I've played country music since I was 15, it's different coming to church and learning some Christian songs, and I'm really enjoying it. Just curious, um, how many out there are country music fans in the long run? Thank you, God. I've been praying about that. <laughs> okay, I'm having a good day. My daughters, I have two of my daughters here today, just in thing, case things don't go well. So, <laughs> Michelle has been here before, but this is the first time for Lori. She came up from Paradise today. She's still living in Paradise. And she came up to go with me. Lori and I played country music together. Um, unfortunately, we got her a guitar when she was 15, too. And uh, she decided to play country music at my request at a later date. She got a rock and roll band. She called Lori and the Boys. Very original. <clears throat> and then I said, honey, if you want to make money in this business, you got to play country. So we formed a country duo called Heart to Heart and played the fair circuit. It's kind of like church because when you go play at the fairs, they're really listening to you, you know? And when you're playing in the hotels and the casinos and the honky-tonks, they hardly know you're up there. It's just some noise, you know? So it was really great. I'm so thankful to be at this church. I love you guys so much. Now, if I can remember the name of the song <clears throat> and the words, the song is called Because He Lives. I learned this a couple weeks ago. I just love it. It's become one of my favorite songs. Hope you like it. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to live, love, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my part. Savior lives because he lives. I can pray tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know. Sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the joy and pride he brings. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face in certain days because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth living just because he and life is worth the living just because he lives. I'm sorry I cut that short, but my car, my guitar is out of tune, and I could hear it. If you didn't notice that, um, God's blessing me again, but it was getting kind of bad there. Did you notice that? <laughs> Thank you. so much, Pat, and we love you. I'll tell you. Wow. <laughs> Good
good to see you all out there today. And uh, I got a, a kind of a special message for you this morning about sharing our faith in beads. And uh, let me tell you where this is coming from. Last week, JR got real, how do I say it, creative. He told you a message through a pencil. Well, I'm not quite that good, but I'm going to tell you a message today in beads. And on my wrist, I have a little bracelet of beads. And uh, let me come back to that little bracelet. They're, they're different colors. I'm going to tell you about this in just a few minutes. But uh, Jesus prayed in John 17. Let me read it to you. That great intercessory prayer of his. And incidentally, when we talk about the Lord's Prayer, we'll keep calling what we sing the Lord's Prayer, but it's really a, his model prayer. John 17 is really his prayer. The whole chapter is praying, not only for his disciples, but for all who will become his disciples. And near the end of it, this is what he says, in beginning in verse 22. Father, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. And then he says, I and them and you and me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus' greatest desire, and it's expressed in his prayer, is that the world would know that God loves people. You're not sitting up there in heaven with a mallet. But God wants to embrace you. God wants our friendship. He wants our fellowship. But certain things have to happen in order for that to come. Now, we all know that, and we, we, we know that God wants us to make that good news known to the world. 1 Peter 3.15, great verse, always be ready to give a reason for the hope that's in you. And one of the things I keep telling people when you're sharing your faith, just tell your story. You don't have to be eloquent. You don't have to be a preacher. Heaven forbid that you become a preacher, okay? Just tell your story. Just share the reason you have hope. So what we're going to do today with these beads is I'm going to tell you how to share your faith with beads. And I want to say this. this I want to thank Jay Devers because he's the one that got me going on this thing. He makes bracelets. And if you want a bracelet, he's going to be out there a day in the lobby with some. He's got about 30 of them. And he's got all the little beads on it. And I'm going to tell you what those beads represent. Because you can take that little bracelet and wear it, and if you have the opportunity, somebody says, why, why do you have hope? What, what is it you believe? Well, let me tell you. I've got this bracelet on here, and each bead stands for something. It's a gospel bracelet. You've got a black bead. They're all different colors. Black stands for sin. I think you can probably figure that one out. We're going to talk about these in a minute. And I'm going to give you a lot of verses here this morning. However, with each bead, I'm going to give you a key verse. So, you know, if nothing else, you walk out of here, you, you'll have some beads and the key verse. But we're going to talk about these beads. Well, the red one, what do you think the red one stands for? What? Blood. We'll get to the love thing. <laughs> blood. And then the white stands for forgiveness. The blue, that's water. That stands for baptism. And the green talks about growth and gold. This is the wonderful one. It's God's promise. Now, there's actually a seventh one, but I'm keeping that secret for a few minutes. I'll tell you about it as we go along. So let's take these one at a time this morning. And I hope you'll jot down some of these notes. And uh, most of them, like I said, most of the verses I've all listed there for you, I think I, I get going, and after we printed this thing up, I get going, and I come up with a couple of other verses, so, you know, it's too late, but I stick them in there, so anyway, but if nothing else today, make sure you get the key verse. Well, let's talk about sin. There's none righteous, that's what Romans 3.10, I think everybody sitting here, you, you kind of know that the, there's a thing called sin, you, I don't think you'd be here if there wasn't, um, Maybe you just come here to watch Joe, um, Jr. you know, and his antics up here, but no. <laughs> no, we, we all know there's a thing called sin, and, and it says there's nobody righteous, not a single one of us. 
All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you know the Roman road to glory, you know this verse. And the wages of sin is death, the scripture tells us. Now here's the key verse, okay? Make sure you get this one. All of our righteousness is like filthy rags. Some of us are probably sitting here. Sometimes people, you know, when you're telling them the good news, and you're explaining this. So, well, I'm not so bad. No, you're really not such a bad. I'm glad you're my neighbor, you know. But nevertheless, in terms of a, compared to a holiness of God, all of our righteousness, <laughs> it's like filthy rags. I like the way the, living, the New Living Translation puts it. We are all infected by sin. Anybody in here doesn't sin? Good, I'm glad. That will put me out of business if you did. Okay. No, we, we all are infected with that disease called sin. And the problem with it is the soul that sins will die. Sin will kill us. And, and the Bible makes it very clear to us that God has placed within all of our hearts a sense of right and wrong. Okay. And, and the amazing thing is, you look at the cultures of the world, yeah, a lot of things do shift around. And, and some cultures will say it's okay to do certain things that we would say that's not so good. But you know, in the main, cultures know that it's wrong wantonly to kill somebody. It's wrong to steal from somebody. It's wrong to take another man's wife, things like that. Those, those things kind of generally crop up in every culture one way or the other. Where do you think that came from? God put that sense in our heart. The Bible tells us, puts it in our hearts, a sense of right and wrong. That's that whole business called sin. Sin, the word sin, you might want to write this down. It's a heavy-duty Christian word we use, you know, and, but it means literally in the Greek language to miss the mark. It's talked about the, the archer aiming for a target, and he missed the mark. That's what sin is. I missed the mark. What do you think the bullseye is? God's holiness. Anybody hit the bullseye? I don't even come close. Well, that, that's, that's what we talk about. You know, when you're sharing your faith with somebody, you might just share with them. You know, I always had this sense <laughs> that I didn't quite have it right. And there came a point in my life where I, I started to think about God. And now sometimes it's getting near the end. Sometimes it's early in life. I mean, for me personally, uh, as a teenager, I, I worried about this issue of God and sin. And the good news, as we'll talk about it in a minute, is there's a cure for this. Well, let's go on to the, the cure. Well, that next bead stands for blood. Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Well, and if you go right back to the very beginning in the Garden of Eden where there was you know, sin entered into the world, what's the first thing that God does? He gives them a covering. He gives Adam and Eve. Now they're naked. They're ashamed of their nakedness. God gives them a covering of skins. Where did that covering come? It came from a sacrifice. And that's where blood began. Well, it goes on to say, here's the key verse. You need to get this verse. You were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish. Over and over again, Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And that's what John the Baptist said. Behold, as the beginning of ministry, he pointed to Jesus and he said, there's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus became the sacrificial Lamb for you and me. In the Bible, blood really represents life. So on the cross, he gave his life for you and for me. And I'm telling this on my sharing my faith with somebody, I would say to them, you know, there came a place in my life where I was very uncomfortable with the kind of person I was. And, and I had this constant awareness that there was a God. And I was a little worried about how I stood with him. And then somebody shared with me how Jesus died for me on the cross. And that was the answer for me. And that's where it started. You could tell somebody that. that that's where it started for me. Well, then, then, uh, and incidentally, what is it we do every time we come to Communion Sunday here? One of the things you take is a cup, right? Now it's all, you know, the bread's on top, the cup's on the bottom, and i got to make sure you turn it right side up and don't spill the blood all over the place, you know, the, the wine. But, but this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's the new agreement 
my relationship with God through the blood of his son. Well, all of that leads to forgiveness. That's what the white is for. Blessed is the man, Psalm 32 says, blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him. Isn't it going to be great someday when I stand before him and, and, and he's going to say, I'm so glad to see you. Welcome into my house. Sometimes we worry, what's, is there something I got? And I have people, sometimes they come to me and they say, I'm worried that I committed the unpardonable sin. Folks, you know what the only unpardonable sin is? Unbelief. Unbelief. That's the one thing God will not forgive. But the rest of it, when Jesus went to that cross, that's what he died for. And I know that when I open my eyes and look into his face, blessed I will be because he won't count my sins against me because he already paid for them. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Now, here's the key verse. You know, I'll write one down. Here it is. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and he is just and will forgive us of our sins. And it goes on to say, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I think most of us know this. John, 1 John 1, 9. One of the great promises I have. Now, incidentally, 1 John, for those Bible students here who will remind me, that John wrote this to Christians. So those who were reading it were Christians. And so this is an important verse for as a Christian, when I get out of line, I need to get right with the Lord. Keep, as somebody puts it, keep short accounts with God. But it also states he's faithful and just to forgive me. I'm either I'm an unbeliever or even as a believer. At the cross, every sin you and I ever committed was paid for. What did Jesus say at the end, well, the last thing he said was, Father, into my hands I commend my spirit. But before that, what did he say? It's finished. What was finished? The whole work that God sent him to do to pay for my sins. So this is an incredibly important verse. Well, the next one, this blue, that's water, is baptism. Well, what about baptism? Now, I want you to listen to this. I'm not out trying to drum up people to go drown in a pool. But I do want you to listen to this because there's a lot of confusion about baptism. At Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was first poured out, Jesus had been crucified, resurrected, and ascended. And 50 days later, after Passover, the disciples were all gathered in an upper room and the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them for the very first time. Peter goes out and preaches like crazy to the same people that had been crying out, crucify him, crucify him. And when they're done listening to Peter present the gospel, this is what they, they all ask, what do we do? And he said, repent, means turn around and go in the other direction. Turn around from going away from Jesus and now go to him and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It tells us about 3,000 that day were baptized. Well, Jesus said to his disciples before he left, I want you to go into the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Well, what is this baptism? Well, here's the key verse. Ephesians 4, 5 says to us, this is Paul listing what it is that unites us as a church. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Well, still, what is, what is baptism? How does that fit in there? Baptism is all about my confession of faith. Romans 10, 9, very important verse. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. And then it says, you will be saved. The key is confession. And confession, the word confess means to say the same thing. It means to agree with God. Jesus is Lord, and to believe in my heart, God raised him from the dead. Now, how does that fit with baptism? Well, when I'm baptized, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of being buried with Jesus in baptism. What happened with Jesus on the cross? They took him down and they buried him. What's going to happen to you and me one day when we die? Well, they may cremate us, but they're still going to bury those remains. We're going to be buried. We're going to turn to dirt, you know. But what we look forward to 
resurrection, we will be raised with him. But here's the key. What does the last two words say? Say them. Through faith. Here's the thing. What is baptism? It's a symbol. It is an outward expression. It was in that early church. They understood it so much better than we do because the Jews were used to baptizing. If you wanted to become, if you were a dirty Gentile and you wanted to become a Jewish person that called that a proselyte, you know what they did? You had to get a bath. And uh, they bathed you. <laughs> and they probably held you under for five or six seconds too if you were a Gentile. You had to wash away all that Gentile dirt to now become new. And now you're part of the promised people, the God's people, the Jewish people. Well, Jews understood that. Along came John the Baptist, and he's baptizing down there in the River Jordan. But what he's calling them to do is repent down there and come and be baptized. And that, that baptism wasn't yet Christian baptism. What it was was reminding people, you think you're so good, but you're really dirty. And I'll tell you, and do you remember who got the most rankled with this? Who got most ticked off? The uppity up priests. How dare him tell us that we have to be baptized? They needed it. And so people, their hearts were convicted. They're wanting to get ready for the Messiah. So they come and they go into the waters. And for them, it was a cleansing thing and a preparation. But then when Christianity came along, it took it a step further. Cleansing is still a part of it. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creation. What? All things passed away. All things are new. There's a cleansing. But more than that, now baptism represented, I believe and I confess, Jesus died and was buried and he rose again. And when you go under the water, you're confessing your belief in his death and burial for you. And when you come out of that water, you're confessing, agreeing with God, he rose for me, and he's given me a new life. That's the significance of baptism. In that early church, never, never a question about it. Now, there's always a question about which is the right way. You know, the, do I sprinkle them? Do I dunk them? Whatever I do. Now, you've got to understand, I come from a Baptist background, so I like to drown people, okay? <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you the most important issue. It's faith. Now, however you got baptized, I'll be happy to take you into a pool and <laughs> dunk you. Uh, these days, I take one of the other guys with me so we don't lose you. <laughs> <laughs> but more important, have you placed your faith in Jesus Christ? Do you believe he, was, he came, his God's son came into the world to live and to die for your sins? And do you believe that the tomb was empty and he's been raised? And I, could, I would say to people, I'm telling my story, there came to the point in my life, and, and that this, this kind of really honestly came a little later in my life. I mean, I'd already become a Christian. I was 12 or 13, seventh grade. I still remember that. And, you know, I kind of got on and off again, you know, a little bit. I wasn't, I wasn't such a bad person, but I wasn't really totally on fire. But then God got a hold of me. <coughs> got a hold of me when I was 20 years old and uh, really did change my life and I began to really learn the word and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But even then, I never questioned the resurrection. It's part of what I believe. The Holy Spirit bore witness in my heart. It wasn't a problem. But you know, later on in my 40s, I began to think it through. Not that I dis disbelieved it, but I began thinking it through. Why do I believe this? And so I began reading things like The Case for Faith and The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel, great books and other things. And I, I can tell you that today, you know, the, and how all this works, you know, between my thinking, between what the Holy Spirit convicts me in my heart and, and, and God works there. But I can tell you today, I believe and I'm convinced that tomb was empty and all the excuses in the world they gave didn't hold any water. So all I can conclude is that Jesus rose like he said he was going to. Amen. And that's what my faith is based upon. And that baptism, when I was baptized, that's what my faith was in. Now, what about that green? That stands for growth. And um, what it says to us is Colossians 2, 6 and 7, it wants us to live rooted and built up in him 
Strengthen in the faith. Be growing means to be strengthened in my faith. Here's the key verse, okay? Get this one? Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I love this verse. It's right near the end of Peter's second epistle. He's in prison, I think, at this point, the Mamertine prison, and uh, shortly he's going to be taken out and executed. But he writes, grow in the grace, meaning your dependence. I think I, it could mean the grace of God, what he gives to us, but I'm really thinking more that he's talking about the grace of God gives to us when he says, my grace is sufficient for you. When you are weak, then I am strong. And in the knowledge of our Lord, know who he is. Know him as your Savior, as your God and your Lord. It's Jesus Christ. That's how we grow. Well, how do we grow? Well, Scripture is given to us. I, I kind of abbreviated this, but all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, uh, correction, rebuke, and instruction in righteousness. But why? The 17th verse is that you may be thoroughly equipped for every good work, so you'll know how to answer people. Again, a little bit of my story. When I was uh, in college at the United States Coast Guard Academy, um, my second year, or my third year, the second class year, that means I was a junior, and I'd come home from Christmas, and for various reasons, I was very convicted of my not walking very strongly with the Lord. And I got down on my knees. I still remember it is embedded in my mind. It's New Year's Eve. I lived on the third floor of the four-story building that we were housed in. And I, out there, out my window was the Thames River in Connecticut. And I got down on my knees and I said, Lord, I really want to mean business about being a follower of Jesus. And for the first time in my life, I began taking my Bible every night for about 15 minutes. All I had was this King James Version Bible that my mother gave me in 1953. And I began reading it. And I got to tell you, a really interesting thing was happening to me. I, I had enough sense to start with the New Testament. I stayed away from Leviticus. Okay? <laughs> but I began reading my Bible. And... You know, God says, my word will not return to me void without accomplishing what I sent it out to do. Tucked away in the back of my mind were all those verses and, and lessons that the Sunday school teacher would be trying to teach us when I'm in seventh, eighth, and ninth grade or whatever it is. You know, I'm back there passing notes or doing whatever. But it was getting through. And I started reading the New Testament. And I would read things. And I think I remember this. And things started fitting together like I, I couldn't believe it. Now, I had a buddy of mine. We were both in a wrestling team. And uh, I used to share my faith with him. And he'd always come up with questions that I couldn't answer. I said, Bob, I'll tell you what. I'll go back to my room, and, and I'll see if I can find out. That might take me a few days, and I'm reading a little more. And I didn't have a concordance. I didn't have a topical Bible. I didn't have any of that stuff. But somehow, God led me to the answer, and I'd make a beeline over to Bob's room, and I'd tell him, here's, here's what I found out. And he, then he'd give me another question that I didn't have an answer for. I got to tell you, this is, this is great. Bob, he was a helicopter pilot, a Coast Guard helicopter pilot. Now, flying helicopters is dangerous as it is, but for whatever reason, he decided to be able to have an exchange thing, and he flew helicopter pilots for the Air Force over in Vietnam picking up guys. Now that is flat out dangerous. While he was doing that, I don't know what all went on, but God really grabbed a hold of him, and there were some other guys, officers over there who shared their faith with him. I ran into him a couple years later. I was out, he was still in, and he made a career out of it, and I found out he was a believer. And it, it was those verses that others shared with him, and a little bit of me starting when he was when we were at the academy god's word never returns void even when we're not paying attention somehow it gets into the crevices of our life well grow in the grace and the knowledge of the lord jesus christ and do it through the scriptures the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path now hang with me we've got a little bit more to go here okay the last one is promise Everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. That's John 3, 15. That's the verse just before John 3, 16. Good verse to know. Here's the key verse. He that hears my word and believes 
and I left it out, but he who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Now, I want you to listen to me for a minute. If you ever have the chance to really share when they, they really are beginning to get this and want to know a little more clearly of what the gospel is and what they need to do. Years ago, as a youth pastor, the guy that was my mentor, my pastor, I thought he was so old. He was only 62. <laughs> he shared this verse with me. And I listened to him do it over and over again with other people. And okay, I want you to listen. It's like I'm talking to you right now. Say the words with me. Say them. He that hears my words, stop. Who is Jesus talking to right now? You. You and me. Okay. He that hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. Stop. When does that say you'll have eternal life? When you believe. Right now. Let's say it again. He that hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged. Stop. What does that say? You're not going to be judged of what? Sin. Yes. Why do you think you're not going to be judged? Because, and we would say, he took the rap already for you. All right? Let's say it again. He that hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed from death to life. What's that last part say? Your life. And that's why we celebrate. When we talk about people that we know, we love, and they passed away, and we miss them, and we're grieving for them, but we know, absent from the body. Why? At home with the Lord. Yes, indeed. Why? Because we know they placed their faith in Jesus Christ they believed in him who sent him, and they aren't judged because Jesus is already judged, and they pass from death into life. One thing is absolutely certain, folks. All of us will die. But there's a passage. I cross from that moment into life. And that's the good news. Proof of that to me is that thief on the cross. That thief on the cross was probably part of Barabbas' you know, rabble. They, they were insurrectionists. They'd killed Roman soldiers. These were not good guys. And if you look at the Gospels and compare things, you'll discover that in the early goings on the cross, both of the thieves were taunting Jesus. Sometime during those six hours, this guy wised up. He knew he was going to die. And something about Jesus... He'd probably heard about Jesus. Who knows? Maybe even the guy was there once or twice when Jesus told a parable and preached. Now he knows he's going to die. He says, remember me when you come in your kingdom. What does he say? This day you will be with me in paradise. That's a promise that does not get any better. And the day you and I place our faith in Jesus Christ, that's his promise. He that lives and believes in me will never die. Okay. Let's see what we can do about winding this up. I, I just love this. I, I got into this. Jay, see what you did to me? <laughs> now, I, I got to tell you more about that in a minute. But anyway, these little beads, it's crazy. My beads are not as attractive as that thing. But There's one final bead. It's the crystal clear bead the witness. Because it says, you will be my witnesses. Just before Jesus left, he said to his disciples, you will be my witnesses. They said, first in Jerusalem, then Judea and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. He said, go into the world and make disciples. And he said, lo, I'm with you, even to the end of the age. And it's not the end of the age yet, although it's looking like it. We've still got the job of making disciples. Okay, here's the key verse. Be ready to give an answer to all who ask a reason for the hope you have. Just tell your story. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be profound. Just tell your story, but be ready. And be ready to listen for things that people say. They'll say maybe something like this. 
you know, you just seem to be so happy all the time. I wish I could be that way. Well, you look for the opportunity. Well, there are times when I'm not happy, but I, I'll tell you what, I've, I have found a way to have peace and happiness. And then, then you kind of listen to see whether or not they take the bait. And they say, well, what do you mean? Well, let me tell you my story. Then you just tell them the story. Live such good lives, Peter said, and this is during the Neronian persecutions. He says, live such good lives among the pagans that they glorify God when he comes. Okay, I'll get back to the jewel referring thing for a minute. I want to tell you a little story, and then we're going to wind this up. I've been writing these devotionals. Lots of you have been asking me, okay, when we retire. Incidentally, if you're new here today and we voted on Jody, it's not because they're kicking me out. <laughs> it's because I'm leaving. I'm not actually leaving either, but... Uh, at the end of the year, I'm retiring, so Jody's going to become the pastor. So anyway, um, you all ask me about the devotionals that I write, and I am going to keep writing them. They will still come to you. And I have been amazed, because I put them on Facebook too. So I've heard from people that I haven't heard from in years. Well, I had something happen about three weeks ago. I had a few guys that I played football in high school. Incidentally, Diane and I are leaving tomorrow when we're driving down to San Diego. So you can pray for us in our little journey down to San Diego. I pray that we're safe, but pray that I don't lose my cool. <laughs> I hate that drive down there. We were down there in July. I swore I was never going back. But it's my 60th high school reunion, so I, I need to go. And um, what's interesting is that some of the people that I went to high school with are reading those on Facebook, and I'm hearing from them. And some of them are guys that played football with me. One of the guys that I played ball with, he sent me a message, a little text uh, the other day, and he said, I really appreciate what you've been writing. The last three days have really been helpful. He said, I need to talk to you. Can I call you? And I said, yeah, come on. And I, I mean, I haven't talked to him since high school. I found out he's a Christian. He kind of came to Christ as a, as a teenager, kind of like I did. Uh, but he, you know, he, he also said, I really got away, but God got me back, and I've been sharing my faith. Two guys that I would hear from, one of whom is now with the Lord, two guys that I would hear from, because they read my, book, my stuff too, and I said, gee, wow. This guy goes on to tell me he shared his faith with those two guys, and they placed their faith in Christ. And that's the way it works. You just, you're just telling people you know. And all it is is telling the story. And I had no idea. Um, one of my other classmates, you know, we played football too, and he was really good. Uh, I don't know whether he knows the Lord yet. He calls me Father Mike. <laughs> uh, but it, it's open doors. I don't know. I'm hoping, you know, when we're down there, and, you know, some people might say, yeah, I really enjoy what you write, and I wish I had that piece. Well, if they do, we get the chance to tell the story. Now, here's the thing. I want to leave you with this this morning. Did you know that you are God's jewelers? You know what you're dealing with? The incomparable riches of his grace and kindness expressed to us in Christ Jesus. That's what you're giving to people. You are also God's ambassadors. 2 Corinthians 5 says, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. So we implore on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That's our message. We're ambassadors. The best one is the one I like next. That's at the bottom of your notes. We are all God's UPS service. <laughs> United Peace Servers. Yes, I did dream that up all by myself. <laughs> Romans 5, 8 says, having been justified by faith, meaning been forgiven by Christ's death on the cross, we have what? Say it with me. Peace with God. And you can deliver that to people's lives. Well, he's already delivered it. You're just taking it to their doorstep. What a wonderful morning. And JR, thank you for starting that whole pencil thing with me. Because I just envied you so much. Actually, I was working on this before I even heard your message, so I like to say you, you started it. But Jay, thank you very much. And I want to tell you, Jay, put your hand up there so you see him over there. Jay, 
he works with uh, one of our mission organizations, and now they're back. And he's got a bunch of these, and they'll be out there in the lobby. And if you if you forget the beads, just look at your notes. But they become a wonderful thing. Somebody can say, "What is that?" Well, I say it's what I call a gospel bracelet. What is that? Well, let me tell you about it. And <laughs> you can just say what each color stands for, and see where God takes you. But thank you, brother. And they'll be out there this morning. And if you want more, we'll make more for you. And uh, after the service today, Jay is going to be back in 122. He's going to be doing a little workshop for just a few moments, not real long, this week and the next couple of weeks. Just on, on, you know, we're praying for revival. There are some things going on in our country. Some are not good, but some are good. God is at work. And we are praying. You're watching stuff happen in the Middle East, folks? <laughs> Stand by. I don't know what's going to go on, but I'll tell you what. It can all fit into whatever God's got a plan that prophecy tells us about. In the meantime, pack your spiritual bag. Make sure Christ is in your life. And uh, Jay will be back there in 122, grab a coffee and something, a donut or whatever, and... Uh, They'll have a little thing. Today it's going to be a, a praying for revival, praying for our nation. And it's going to tell you some more about some things. After the first of the year, we're going to have some stuff. And we're really praying God does not does a great work in our country. Well, let me pray just for a second. Father, I really thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to share this. I pray, Father, that each of us can understand that we, we have an opportunity to just tell our story. So help us to always be ready to give a reason for the hope that's in us. Bless us now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Jay, are you going to come up here and lead us? There you, there you are. Boy, you're fast. I told you. He's nimble. He's fast on his feet, you know. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Let's stand, shall we? And let's sing, He is Lord. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. We're going to sing it through twice. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. First, let me state that the election we just had is official. So the members of this church have decided that Associate Pastor Jody Shorkey shall be called as our senior pastor effective January 1st, 2024. So I would like to uh, invite Pastor Jody and Trish up here. Pastor Jody is going to close us in prayer also. May God have mercy on you. <laughs> Four years ago when Trish and I came to this church, we believed that God was calling us to this church. And, and you have confirmed the calling that God has on our life. If you've never prayed for your pastor or your church or your pastor's family, Start praying. This is a good time to start praying. And if you have prayed for your church and your pastor and his family, don't stop. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you and you alone are unique to bring this group of people together. 
Heavenly Father, we pray that you would guide our steps, direct our path, and delight in the road we travel. And we would be so bold as to tell you, thank you. Thank you in advance. For we ask it in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.